Hello, and welcome to my iMovie about furry dogs. Like these furry dogs. I think that the prairie dogs have very interesting aspects, such as their social capacity, their burrowing, and their colonality. I have come here to Theodore Roosevelt National Park to observe and record prairie dogs making calls, interacting with each other, running around, and doing what prairie dogs mostly tend to do. A big part of the prairie dogs is their social capacity, how social they are compared to other mammals. This is true for all prairie dog species because they communicate quite a bit with warning calls and normal prairie dog speech alike. Now let's see what happens when somebody makes a loud noise and maybe makes the prairie dogs mad. Which one will make a warning call, which ones will get in their burrows faster? Let's find out. Look at how long it takes for the prairie dog to go back in his hole. Also, notice how the squeaks of the prairie dog come closer together as danger gets closer. Prairie dogs have a very interesting vocabulary. They don't just know that a human is coming, but they can also tell that there is a tall human wearing blue coming. Prairie dogs are also pretty considerably tough and can hurt other animals a lot with their bite. Young prairie dogs are called juveniles, and they are quite a bit smaller than the adults. Sometimes when they first come out of their underground home, they come back to the wrong burrow and live with another mom. Unfortunately for us, we can't see the prairie dog juveniles right now because all of the prairie dogs are super fat and getting ready for hibernation. Prairie dogs make huge holes in the ground called burrows. They put those burrows together to make big prairie dog communities, but it takes a lot of work to make all those burrows. Prairie dogs use their burrows for different purposes with the higher priority rooms further down. These rooms include the listening room, where prairie dogs wait for predators to go away. The listening room is also located further up so the prairie dogs can actually listen. Another room is the storm shelter, where the prairie dogs go to have shelter during bad weather. One of the lowest in elevation rooms is the nursery. The nursery is where the babies live and grow up. Here, the burrows are very rough, and some of them are misplaced and not organized. Here, the prairie dog burrows are more smooth, more organized, and a little more flat. Some prairie dog burrows can be weird and disorganized, some of them are more smooth. Who knows what will it be like? The number of prairie dogs that live in a single burrow varies a lot. Some burrows may have one, and some burrows may have nine. Who knows how many live in a single burrow? Prairie dogs like to use something called colonality to keep them safer. They stay in colonies like this big colony called Prairie Dog Town to make sure they make more prairie dogs to survive longer. Another benefit of colonality is that the prairie dogs spot their predators faster and thus have more time to run away. Some of the cons of colonality is that the prairie dogs are bunched up so they will be an easy target. They'll also spread disease, and some of them are infected with the bubonic plague, the Black Death, so the spread of disease is very fatal. 
What seems to be the best reason for colonality is that the prairie dogs notice their predators really fast, and so more of them survive. Another weakness of colonality is that the infanticide rates are high, so more prairie dogs will be killed by their own kin. Prairie dogs live in tightly knit family groups called coteries. The coteries tend to have a single breeding male, a few females, and the female's children. The average coterie contains about six prairie dogs. I read on the internet that some humans can also live in coteries. I think the prairie dogs should have more help to survive because it turns out they are actually an endangered animal. If prairie dogs would go extinct, then there wouldn't be enough good habitat for other animals. Those animals include bees, bison, and black-footed ferrets. They would all suffer from habitat loss due to there not being enough prairie dogs. I feel bad for the prairie dogs because they are infected with the bubonic plague, the Black Death, and the plague might kill off all of the prairie dogs. I wonder if there are more species of prairie dogs out there, maybe in a foreign country on the other side of the world, waiting to be discovered. about the prairie dogs. There is a prairie dog here, here, and everywhere. There's a lot of prairie dogs today and I took a video of them. See you later.